now let us uh, go little bit below much at the back of the thigh and at the back of the thigh we can see the muscles which are known as the hamstring muscles okay so on the back of the thigh we can see the hamstring muscles so hamstring muscles have some characteristic like uh, the origin from the ischial tuberosity they inserted uh, on the one of the bone of the leg they are supplied by the tibial part of the sciatic nerve and they act as a flexors of the knee joint and extensors at the hip joint so these are the common characteristic of the hamstring muscles and uh, hamstring muscles include semi membranosus semi tendinosus bicep femoris long head of the bicep femoris you can say and adductor magnus so uh, let us see the first muscle so this is the this one is the slender tender like muscle this is the semi tendinosus muscle on the medial side you can see semi tendinosus muscle okay just below the semi tendinosus you can see here this is the semi membranosus muscle uh, again on the medial side then uh, let us uh, move towards the lateral side on the uh, the muscle which inserted on to the fibula you can see here this is the bicep femoris muscle it having a two head long and the short, short head you can see the long head is uh, arises from the ischial tuberosity so this one is the long head you can see here and the short head it arises from the linea aspera of the femur so you can identify or differentiate the two heads of the bicep femoris by this manner now uh, just a uh, little bit below and uh, little bit deeper and uh, on the medial side you can see this is the adductor magnus muscle so adductor magnus is visualized from the both the side as it having a two head the ischial head it arises from the ischial tuberosity you can see here and the adductor part which arises from the ramus of the ischium so this is the adductor magnus muscle and as we know this all this hamstring muscle they are supplied by the tibial part of the sciatic nerve whereas only the short head which is supplied by the common peroneal nerve of the sciatic nerve uh, remember one thing here that uh, adductor magnus this muscle is also supplied by obturator nerve so it having a dual nerve supply adductor part by the obturator nerve hamstring part by the tibial part of the sciatic nerve so this is the back of the thigh and uh, here on the back of the thigh just little behind or b below and behind the knee joint we can see here the popliteal fossa and uh, you can see it is a rhomboid shaped fossa having a four boundary supralateral supramedial infralateral and promedial boundary so popliteal fossa it is bounded on the supramedial side here we can see it is bounded on the supramedially it is bounded by semi tendinosus semi membranosus on the lateral side bounded bounded by bicep femoris below it is bounded by on the inframedial side medial head of the gastrocnemius and on the lateral side lateral head of the gastrocnemius which is uh, supplemented by the plantaris muscle so this is a rhomboid shape uh, popliteal fossa with the four boundaries and contains our tibial nerve common peroneal nerve which is a branch of sciatic nerve you can see sciatic nerve here this is the tibial nerve and this is the common peroneal nerve and you can also see deep to it you, this is the popliteal vein and more deeper you dig you can see the popliteal artery and their branches so this is popliteal fossa and their boundaries and their contents uh, just uh, remember that i am going too fast and it is just a revision for the practical purpose so uh, read this popliteal fossa in detail from your book from your textbook reference book so you can 
write it into the into your exam now let us move on the lake so let us see front of the lake okay so in the front of the lake which is also known as the extensor compartment remember that uh, in lower limb the extensor compartment are located in front side and the flexor compartment are located on the back side as there is a rotation of the limbers the direction of the limbs are change now so in the front of the leg and the dorsum of the foot we can see uh, around the ankle there is a two retinaculum superior and the inferior retinaculum the superior retinaculum is just like a band from the tibia to the uh, fibula from its lower end while the inferior retinaculum is y shaped and they are most commonly asked during the exam now uh, let us see muscles from the medial to lateral side in the front of the leg we can see first this is the tibialis anterior muscle it is a spindle shaped belly you can see this one is the tibialis anterior muscle how you can identify so it is inserted onto the, onto the medial cuneiform so it passes on the medial towards the medial border of the sole so this is the tibialis anterior muscle just lateral to it you can see extensor hallucis longus so as it goes inserted on to the hallux we can see the extensor hallucis muscle this is the extensor hallucis more literally you can see extensor digitorum longus as it says digitorum it having a four digits digital insertion so you can identify it by that extensor digitorum longus more literally you can see the peroneus tertius and this muscle is inserted on the base of the fifth metatarsal bone so you can identify the tertius by it passes towards the late left border of the your sole so this is the peroneus tertius muscle and uh, the extensor digitorum brevis is the muscle of the dorsum of the foot which arises from the anterior superior part of the calcaneum and it is a small muscle of the dorsum of the foot so here you can see the extensor digitorum brevis so from medial to lateral tibialis anterior extensor hallucis longus extensor digitorum longus peroneus tertius and deep to it there is extensor digitorum brevis and the muscles of the front of leg they are supplied by the deep peroneal now all these muscles all these five muscles they are supplied by the deep peroneal now and the the two structures we see which is the deep peroneal now and uh, anterior tibial artery they are found between the extensor hallucis longus and extensor digitorum longus and here the mnemonic you can remember the structures passes in front of the lower end of the tibia or just under the extensor retinaculum by this mnemonic tall himalayas are never dry places t for the tibialis anterior himalayas uh, stand for the extensor hallucis longus r a stands for the artery anterior tibial artery n stands for the now deep peroneal now d for the digitorum longus here the extensor digitorum longus and p stands for the peroneus tertius so this is about the front of the leg and uh, dorsum of the foot okay and uh, next we will move to the medial and the lateral side okay okay let us move on the lateral side of the leg so at this side you can see there are two muscles are present the peroneus longus and peroneus brevis muscle uh, you can identify this muscle by its insertion uh, just uh, look at this this peroneus longus is inserted on the lateral side of the first metatarsal bone at its base so you can see this tendon is travel from the lateral to the medial side and the peroneus brevis it is inserted on the base near the tuberosity of the base of fifth metatarsal so you can see the insertion of per peroneus brevis out of this two muscles the uh, longus is superficial whereas the brevis is deep 
but when you see this muscle just deep to the peroneus retinaculum which is located over here so just uh, deep to the peroneus retinaculum the peroneus brevis lies on the uh, superficial uh, peroneus brevis lies superficial and longus lies just at the lower part of it so uh, these two muscles they are supplied by the deep peroneal now just remember one thing here there are three peroneus muscles peroneus longus brevis and tertius and out of this tertius it is muscles of extensor compartment you can see in the uh, front of the leg whereas the brevis and longus are the muscles of the lateral compartment and uh, these two are supplied by the deep peroneal now whereas the tertius is supplied by the superficial peroneal now okay now let us move on the back of the leg so back of the leg consists of three super three superficial muscles uh, they are the gastrocnemius you can see this is the medial and lateral head of the gastrocnemius and just deep to it you can see the soleus muscle so these three muscles they are together known as the triceps urae and uh, they are supplied by the tibial now these two these three muscles means medial and lateral head of the gastrocnemius and soleus they together form a thickest and longest tendon of our body which is known as the tendocalcaneus here you can see the tendocalcaneus so this is the tendocalcaneus inserted on the middle part of the posterior surface of the calcaneus so triceps urae now let us see the deep muscles so to identify the deep muscles we have to move on the medial side just behind the medial malleolus of the tibia so let us see first muscle you can see that this is the tibialis posterior here you can see this tibialis posterior it is mainly inserted on the tuberosity of the navicular bone and the rest of the slip will passes to all the tarsus except talus and uh, also it passes to the first second and third metatarsus so the insertion of the tibialis posterior is most important uh, it may be asked in the viva or in exam also just behind it you can see uh, the flexure digitorum longus so this is the flexure digitorum longus muscle as we can see it having a digitorum bird so it divide into four slip so this is a flexure digitorum longus just deep, deep to it we can see the tibial now this is the tibial now and posterior tibial artery you can see the posterior tibial artery also here this is it just behind it you can see the flexure hallucis longus so you can see this is its tendon passes towards the hallux so this is the flexure hallucis longus muscle and uh, so all these three muscles they are supplied by the tibial now tibial is posterior flexure digitorum longus and flexure hallucis longus they are supplied by the tibial now they are the, the muscles of the deeper compartment of the back of the leg and they are the flexures as the posterior compartment is flexure in the volume so this is the these three muscles are the flexure muscles So in the back of the leg between the gastrocnemius and soleus we can see the slender tendon thin slender tendon which look like a nerve this is the plantaris muscle you can see here this is the this one is the plantaris between the gastrocnemius muscle and the soleus you can see its tendon it lies just lateral to the tendocalcaneus this one is the tendocalcaneus just lateral to it there is a plantaris muscle so it lies on the back of the leg just deep to the gastrocnemius